would you have been if not a chef? Um, sad. The in- inspiration was early on was my grandfather. He was a chef. One of my favorites was, and it's become my favorite, is um, uh, Raj Kachuri, an older guy with glasses. Who is this person? And I think it's um, uh, Bachan, is it? Amitabh Bachan. First time, everybody was like, yes, oh my goodness. Uh, fifth time, no. Give them to the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to NDTV Food. Today we have a very special guest with us. He's a celebrated chef from Australia and he's also the judge of a popular cooking reality show. And not only that, he's a cookbook author and has a chain of restaurants in Australia. So please welcome chef Gary Mehgan. So hi chef, uh, welcome to NDTV Food. So excited that you have connected with us here today. Pleasure, thank you. So, you know, I'm going to begin this interview by asking the same questions uh, a lot of people must have asked you, but our readers also want to know that. What brings you to India and what are your plans for India? This time? <laughs> well, a couple of reasons, actually. We try and, um, if we're coming over for a visit, we try and, you know, make sure we've got an action-packed, um, you know, time. So um, I'm filming for a new series with National Geographic India. And I'm also in collaboration uh, with Konosh, which, uh, you know, a little relationship that started about two years ago uh, during lockdown. You know, that funny little thing that happened to us? Or not funny, <laughs> but we've kind of moved on. But yeah, it started with Konosh. Um, I did uh, three or four online Zoom classes, uh, you know, some sourdough and pastry, some tart classes. So yeah, they asked whether or not I'd love to come out and actually, for the first time, do an, you know, instead of online, do an actual yeah. physical <laughs> series of dinners. So I said, yes, you know, let's do it. I've heard that you are in Mumbai and you'll be coming to Delhi very soon. So what's the yeah. plan for Delhi? Yeah, so we, we're, um, I think we arrive, um, and in fact, I've lost my sense of time. I know Christmas is coming. So, yeah. uh, you know, I think, um, I think by the 19th, we're only three, four days in Delhi, I think four days. So we touch down, um, we're visiting both Taj Palace and now I've got a brain block the other Taj, um, and we have dinner in each one in a masterclass at, at the Taj Palace. So dinners are expected to be around, uh, I think 120 each dinner. So five course menu plus canopies of my, you know, my favorite go-to at home, to be honest, dishes. So Chef, I want you to tell us about the Indian street food or travel experience that you relished recently. Uh, any street food that you tried in India or any uh, place that you travel that you really liked? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, as part of this, I mean, like I've been to India now probably, you know, and I've lost count, I'd have to check my passport, but it might be around 15 plus times. <laughs> and so it's a quite long, you know, so there could be three or four weeks at a stretch. You know, I spent a month in uh, Kerala all up, uh, 10, 12 days filming, and then my wife and I took a holiday, traveled through uh, you know, from Kochi up to Muna, Thikadi, Kamarakon and back in. And so, yeah, I'm eating everything I find. Um, Nagaland was the same. I, I was at Mao Market not five or six days ago, eating um, locust and, um, you know, buying carpenter worms, silk worms, red worms, uh, <laughs> just, and then, you know, cooking and eating and eating, um, you know, uh, rice, and I'm trying to remember the name, but a, a, a rice roti, you know, on, on the street and picking up, you know, uh, naga fern and yeah. So I'm not sure if I'm answering the question, but I've eaten a lot. If you need yeah. to know. <laughs> yeah, so, I it well, I mean, we got a lot of information there. <laughs> now I'm thinking, because now you've got my foodie brain going. I, I love, uh, I was up in Jaipur and we were eating lots of things like Kandivala and um, one of my favorites was, and it's become my favorite, is, um, uh, Raj Kachori, like oh. I just, oh. it's, yeah. it's heavenly. <laughs> this is what Indian audience, that's why I love being in India is this, this shared um, passion for food and all the, you know, all of its wonderful, you know, you romantic and, food, yeah. <laughs> it plays a great part in that. So things, that Raj Kachori, you know, I, you know, saw the guys making it, I asked, could I get involved and, you know, made a few clumsy kachuri, but once they're kind of in the fryer, you're okay. But then smashing that and covering it in curds and coriander and, you know, tamarind and it's just a really lovely experience of everything as a person that loves food of, um, and people talk about it or did talk about it, you know, when molecular gastronomy became a, the thing, you know, t- how 20 years ago, they were talking about texture and temperature and, 
you know, crunch and, and I go, hang on a minute, you've got jewelry. <laughs> Has everybody ever any taste of that? Because that, in a nutshell, <laughs> is like a um, little world of, you know, molecular me just on its own. So, yeah. Talking about being foodie and love for food, did you grow up in a foodie family? And, um, you know, I mean, like, in, in continuation to that, uh, tell us what inspired you, like, when you started cooking for the first time. I think my my mum and she does apologise for it because that's the person she is. She's very creative. She's an artist and calligrapher. She's you know she's older now. She's eighty years old but still healthy and you know loving life and still drawing and you know she's a she was a um uh a, a, I'm trying the president of the scribes and illuminators guild of uh, United Kingdom. It's a very rare rarefied air up there. But you know she paints on and does gold leaf and beautiful calligraphy on vellum and all sorts of things like she's seriously talented so there's, there's got a bit of a there's got to be some creative genetics there but the in, inspiration was early on was my grandfather he was a chef and it took me some time to realize even though dad my dad my father was an engineer and very measured and clever and patient that I wasn't any of those things I was impatient tempestuous and you know annoying and and, and I've connected with my grandfather because he loved people and um, hospitality was his life and um, he loved growing things in his garden and it just seemed to be a very natural um, fascinating path to follow I don't think I really truly understood it when I chose to be a chef but um, now I understand it very clearly and I do much of the same things as my grandfather as I'm getting older you know I love growing vegetables and you know, I love um, I love people. You know, like he used to talk to everybody. Uh, chef, while creating new recipes, do you uh, try them on your friends or family? Like, who's your guinea pig? <laughs> yeah. uh, I wrote a book. Uh, I wrote a book last year, for example, and um, you there's lots of excited, you know, moans and groans in the family when the dish hits the table for the first time. Yeah. But I tried it five or six times. There's moans and groans of a different kind. So yeah. So, you know, in the book, for example, I perfected canelay, which are a little, um, you know, French crusty, you know, pastry from Bordeaux. And when I first made them, and they're delicious, they're kind of caramelizy and, and crusty on the outside and inside they're soft and, you know, yeah. um, you know, spongy, they're, they're beautiful. And, and when you have them with coffee, they're such a treat, but they are really painful to cook. They're quite difficult to get right. So I, to perfect the recipe, I had to maybe make it at least five or six times. First time, everybody was like, yes, oh my goodness. Uh, fifth time, no, give them to the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> so Chef, uh, talking about, you know, dining and eating, what is your favorite cuisine when you're dining? And what is your favorite when you're cooking? So there are two questions. <laughs> yeah, they're very hard to, oh, no, maybe they're not. But for me, it's um, a sense of place, you know, and even uh, Dan Schwartz, who's my head chef, um, that's come to help me um, on this trip. Um, someone said, oh, do you want dumplings? You know, the, the I think the Taj, I'm trying to think, MG has a really good Chinese restaurant, Hunan Chinese. And he just goes, no, nah, I'm in India, man. And I'm in, I'm in Bengaluru, give me something from here. And that kind of sums it up, you know, wherever I am in the world, you know, whether it's a glass of wine or a snack on the street, then I'm, I want to eat. The, something of that place so yeah the first question it's 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 about place and I think it that goes towards how we should all think about our food our food um, but the, I mean look you can have pizza it's okay you can have but <laughs> most of the time it's uh, it's food of a place um, favorite things to cook at home are just seasonally based I, I take a lot of pleasure in as things come into season so for example you know in Australia now um, it's pr the best time of year coming in uh, end of spring starting of summer for things like tomatoes and you know the, the end of the season for asparagus but you know these are the things that uh, you know peas uh, snow peas um uh, the end of kind of those that spring green season so every time something comes in so when i get back to australia all the stone fruits cherries you know will be are just starting to beginning of december start flooding the market um yeah they, you know so that they're the inspiration so you know i come home with a box of cherries now what to do with cherries do we just sit there and eat them as a bowl of cherries or do i make clafouti or a cherry tart or you know do i steep them in brandy and put them in jars in in the cupboard uh, so, you know, I um, like personally feel that, you know, like to, uh, you know, like enjoy your cuisine, you need to understand it. How true is that? 
Yeah, absolutely true. I mean, this is somebody asked me the question, you know, do you have any in Indian inspiration on your yeah. uh, menu for uh, the dinners that you're doing with Konosh? And I said, well, uh, not really. I mean, I feel quite, I love cooking Indian food at home. And when I say Indian, I mean, you know, it could be from Kerala or from Goa or from, you know, from Kashmir. I love those recipes. But I feel, and maybe because I'm very confident in, my, I spent many years training as, you know, in French, you know, classical French food, and I know those techniques inside out. And I still find that I'm, I feel like a newbie in India. Yeah. I still find that that, you know, even when uh, Ranveer Bra was in Australia, he came around for dinner at our house and he said, oh, I'll cook something. And we went to the market and I cooked a couple of things, he cooked a couple of things. And just watching him, you know, little, even the order of spices, it's not natural to me. It's not a, it's not innate, whereas, you know, cooking a coco vin or a braised oxtail or a beautiful silky mashed potato or, you know, a, I don't know, you know, gratin dauphinoise, you know, these, these, that I feel, you know, whereas I, I still make Indian recipes. Chef, you have a very lively vibe, even in your shows. So, I mean, how, what advice would you like to give to make the affair more enjoyable for the budding chefs or chefs in the cooking shows, you know, I and mean, there's a lot of pressure on them. Yeah, I think um, I, th I, I spoke to a young man um, at one of the dinners. He was a budding, you know, he was a young chef, and he was trying to make a decision, honestly, whether or not he pursued a career in in behind the scenes, you know, in the kitchen, or whether or not he should go into hotel management. And I said, well, I can't answer that question for you. you the, the only thing you need to ask yourself is is whether or not you really feel truly um, passionate about it. And I said, it sounds cliched, but. Uh, but to keep going, you know, it's a hard career. It's uh, sometimes not very, you know, it's not sexy like television and Instagram. You know, like, you know, when you see someone walking along the street and they look really grumpy and sad and then they take this wonderful selfie where yeah. they're having time in their life and then they go back to being grumpy. And everybody that's watching their <laughs> chat, yeah. Yeah. It, these people are living such a dream life and mine's not as interesting. But. You know, the life of a, a professional chef, a, a young chef, is 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 it's the ten thousand hours rule. You know that uh, to get good at something, you've just got to do it over and over again. And and they also call it the dip. So there's a there's a bit of time where you just have to ride the the learning. It's like when you take up playing the guitar or you know riding a horse. The first bit's really exciting, and then the hard yards is the perfection. If, uh, from your experience judging a popular reality show, can you tell us one memorable meal that stayed with you long after the show was over? Uh, that's an interesting one. Um, there was a, there were a lot. There were, I mean, I did eleven um, eleven uh, series of no no more. I did eleven years, nearly twelve years of MasterChef. I did uh, sixteen series all up, including two junior and professional celebrity. So it was a long time. But some of the standout dishes. I kind of remain the same and they tend to be very early on in the life of the the show you know years one two three you know sashi cella did a, a, a prawn dish with uh, deep fried prawn dish with curry leaves um in the finale of i think season nine and it was just absolutely drop dead gorgeous like really wow so, um, Chef, I mean, we have talked about Indian food as well, like you would like Raj Kachori, Nahari. What um, Indian spices you're most fond of? Like, Yeah, that's it. That might be, let's see if I can give you a quick one. I use a lot of black pepper. I know it's maybe not an obvious answer, but I've got a, I've got 30 odd spices in the cupboard, maybe more. And then on my bench top, I've got like five, you know, plus salt, you know, and they tend to be the obvious, you know, fennel, which I love, fennel seed I love, cumin seed of green cardamom, I, I love. Um, black pepper is always there and it can be coarsely ground and it can be, you know, all fine. And for me, it gives the, you know, it can be subtle, it can be a, um, astringent, it can be hot, you know, like there's lots of different things it can be. It's a very simple question. I mean, I this is my personal question, which is more fun, writing cookbooks, hosting cook shows or judging a reality cooking show? Like, which one did you enjoy the most? I think I like cooking at home for my family most. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> I I do love the I think having the opportunity outside of say my restaurant and chef career to teach a huge audience about the things that I love has been such a pleasure in my life. You know, so you know, as a restaurant chef 
or a hotel chef, your field of influence is your customers. And that may be thousands, but when you're on television, it's millions. Yeah. That, that, that's a, a privilege that I'll never take for granted. So chef, uh, what keeps you going to explore the world and the uh, different foods and different cuisines that the world has to offer? What is your motivation? Because I'm sure as you're even asking the question, it's so obvious. It's just such a wonderful, to travel and eat and meet new people and you know, you, we just owe it to ourselves. If we can afford to do it, you know, and, you know, to travel overseas and experience different cultures and food and people and see what all the wonderful things that we have in common rather than, you know, right now in life, we just seem to be agitated and, you know, we're looking at all the things that we don't have in common. It's, it's the, 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 the first thing is so much more attractive. It's just such a, we owe it to ourselves to experience as much as we can. So I, I couldn't think of any greater pleasure, even if I couldn't travel overseas. One of your fans, Dipanshu, wants to know uh, one recipe that you feel is seriously overrated. <laughs> um, you know what I've, I, I, and I find, I love it. When, certainly when I first came to India, um, people were very much, you know, they were insistent on telling me that the Indian queen, the Indian cuisine was so diverse and that, you, you know, every region, every sub-region, every household, you know, every recipe was different. And, you know, I was like, wow. But everywhere I seemed to go, I got fed butter chicken, dal makhani, And, you know, the first, that was the first question, you know, and I was like, seriously, if someone else asked me, would I like butter chicken? I'm going, ah, you know, I just, you know, so I do love butter chicken, but I reckon I haven't had butter chicken on my last uh, six visits, you know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, Samantha wants to know, what is the next destination on your mind after India? Cool. Uh, outside of India, probably Japan. Wow. You know, yeah, Japan. Japan has obviously had really strict lockdown policies and um, I love Japan, like love it. And, and I've had on my mind, you know, really for the last year since, you know, Australia's opened, we've, we've, you know, Australia and India have opened back up that um, a trip to the Hokkaido, the North Island and traveling around the coast is really, uh, I, I want to do that. So Chef, uh, with this we uh, are going to be uh, starting with our last segment which is a rapid fire round. So you have to answer within three seconds if you can. <laughs> so I'm going to like ask questions. Um, first question, one childhood comfort food that you continues to be your favourite? Ice cream. Three Bollywood <laughs> actors you would like to invite to your table and what would you serve them? Uh, Amir Khan. Okay. The wrestling movie that he was in, I think it was Danga. <laughs> Dangal, yeah. Dangal, yeah. Um, and the other guy that it took me, and I feel so bad about it, I said, who's the, I see on every poster, there's a guy, an older guy with glasses. Who is this person? And I think it's um, uh, Bachan, is it? Amitabh Amitab Bachan. And I never knew who he was, so I actually, <laughs> you know, I bought him pink a couple of years ago, and I, yeah, he's quite a serious dude, but uh, my... <laughs> But somebody that did my makeup once said, oh, he's just a wonderful man. So, he's a legend. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I, I miss legends sometimes. And I also saw a movie because I love boxing and I saw a movie um, based on, I think it was Mary Tom and it was... Um, uh, Chopra. Priyanka Chopra. Priyanka Chopra, yeah. So, yeah, some, yeah they'd, be, they'd be good. And I, and I have to qualify this. I, I, my experience of Bollywood is very, very limited. Tandoori chicken or pork ribs? Oh, no tandoori chicken. Like, mm -hmm. I love, don't yeah. get me wrong, love tandoori. <laughs> One bizarre dish you've had and where? Oh, well, uh, well, let's, let's just put Nagaland on the, on the list. Mm -hmm. That's just been mind blowing, you know, yeah. our future food and insects, you know, then, you know, I ate, as I say, I ate carpenter worms, silkworms, uh, yeah. local, <laughs> uh, hornet larvae, um, and, there'd be a lot of people out there going, oh, Kaz, what are you talking about? But actually, you know, if you put it in context of Naga and its his, Nagaland and its history and people, and and you get over this idea that it's not a delicious thing. What would you have been if not a chef? Um, sad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a nice answer. <laughs> What's the modern kitchen gadget you couldn't live without? You know, actually, uh, it seems a silly answer, but a... Um, a and maybe it doesn't make sense when I think about Indian food, but a thermometer, a digital thermometer. Yeah. <clears throat> so digital, you know, what's happened in recent years, particularly, you know, for, we think about 
molecular gastronomy, what it's left us with as chefs is a very uh, good understanding of, of temperature and how that affects food. You know, even in baking, you know, yeah. you can take things, you know, whether it's sugar work or baking a cake, baking bread. So for example, when you bake bread like sourdough, it needs to be 94 degrees and above to be cooked. And when you take a big loaf out of the oven, people go, how do you know it's cooked? I go, well, actually, you know, you, in the old days, you turn it upside down and tap its bottom. And now you can put a digital, and you'd guess from the hollow sound that it was cooked. <laughs> now you can put a digital thermometer in and you know exactly when it hits 96 degrees that it's cooked. Or if you're cooking a piece of meat uh, and you want medium rare at 48 to 54 degrees, it's cooked. So it takes the guesswork out of everything. Okay, so three cooking gadgets you would take to a deserted island. <laughs> Uh, a big chopper because there's got to be coconuts yeah. so <laughs> i'll take that um it's maybe not a cook cooking gadget but a, a box of matches or something that you know would give me some fire you know like flint and yeah. you know uh, probably a, like, a lighter yeah <laughs> yeah something like fire you know at least i could and then i need to catch fish so it's not a, it's not a cooking gadget but i'd like a fishing rod or a spear <laughs> oh, I, pan, don't know. I need a pan so yeah, i get a cook it yeah thing to light fire there you go so thank you chef that was the uh, end of our rapid fire round and um, so one last question Aditi would like to ask uh, so chef I wanted to uh, ask you a cooking tip that you would swear by and you would like to share with uh, your fans or chefs all over the world here's the thing it sounds very strange but understanding heat or temperature yeah. and you're in control of that I know it sounds really silly but you know if you're frying an egg in a frying pan or you're stir frying something in a in a wok. It really is just. It's not about the things that are in it, as much as the temperature that you're applying to it. So people get stressed because I don't know they're stir frying something and it's all they're getting. It's all going too fast. Or they put an egg in a in a cold pan and it sticks. You know, or a piece of fish in a cold pan and it sticks. So just learning just to either you know just that control of temperature that's actually a very important tip you know it's a very useful tip to understand and what heat the uh, what what heat you know food should be cooked yeah that's thank you so amazing. much chef. thank you so thank much you. for the wonderful tip and uh, thank you for, so much for talking to us today it was great pleasure i hope to see you soon in person in delhi as well yeah so, see you soon thank you chef thank you thank you, thank you. John, and thanks to Gonosh, to be honest for uh, bringing me out and putting the dinners on fabulous Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.